That's one less <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm here. Uh, let me start with a few uh, announcements. The first is tomorrow is uh, Tilt Rotor Day. You may have seen the uh, Tilt Rotor, the Osprey, flying around outside the building this morning. Um, two will land tomorrow at uh, 9.15, I guess between 9.15 and 10.30 in the morning. Uh, one will disgorge uh, uh, General uh, Jones, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and uh, Secretary Cohen will go out and uh, uh, view the landing of this uh, unique um, uh, technology and um, uh, make, make a few remarks. Where are they going to land? They're going to uh, land at the uh, River Entrance Parade Ground, right where uh, distinguished visitors are uh, are uh, greeted, and um, Secretary Cohen will make some remarks and take a few questions on tilt rotor technology or anything else. Uh, second, um, after uh, this event, uh, Secretary Cohen will go to New York, where he'll make some uh, remarks tomorrow night uh, before the um, uh, National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, which is holding its uh, biennial dinner, and. Uh, uh, from there, he will fly out to uh, San Diego, California, and on Thursday, he will uh, visit the uh, USS Shiloh and get a briefing on theater missile defense and uh, meet with the crew, uh, make some uh, uh, remarks there, and then in the evening, he'll give a speech to the uh, International Institute of Strategic Studies, which is holding its uh, convention in San Diego, and uh, he plans to... Uh, uh, talk about uh, some of the uh, lessons learned from Kosovo in that speech. Um, I cannot promise you that we will have an advanced copy of the speech, but we'll do the best we can. And uh, we have a visitor here from Poland, I believe, in the back. Uh, welcome, a Polish journalist whose name I will not massacre on the stand, uh, but she is visiting uh, under the uh, USIA program. And finally, I want to announce uh, as you, I hope, all know by now that uh, Captain Tim Taylor, uh, who uh, did wonderful uh, work at UCOM running the PA shop, has uh, taken over as the uh, Director of Defense Information, so he will be your uh, primary uh, contact and helper. Uh, we're very glad to have uh, Tim on board. He's one of, uh, one of uh, a long line of people I've stolen from Europe, including his predecessor, Dick Bridges, and uh, before that, Mike Doubleday, of course. So, Tim, welcome. And that'll take your questions. Charlie. Uh, Ken, on East Timor, are they, um, are they any, I realize the United States, as the White House said, is, is waiting and watching while, while the UN studies the situation. Meanwhile, are there any U.S. military emergency evacuation plans, anything like that underway for possible use of the U.S. military in East Timor? No. Uh, the United States has three ships on stand Port Darwin and they may get underway in the coming days and might head for that area. Is that just kind of a precautionary thing? The, uh, there are two ships in Port Darwin, uh, two combatants. Uh, uh, one is the uh, USS uh, Mobile Bay a cruiser, and uh, the second uh, is a destroyer, the USS O'Brien. Uh, they are actually there for uh, an exercise called uh, Crocodile 99. <coughs> And um, they will be participating in that exercise, which uh, I think begins on September 15th or so and uh, runs into October. There's also a third ship there, which is a, um, a support ship, the USNS uh, uh, Kilu, K-I-L-E-A-U. Your Hawaiian is better than mine. Uh, and uh, it is in the area, uh, but... Uh, uh, is not, uh, is just sailing around at this stage. So that ship has helicopters on it. It does have uh, two helicopters, yes, I think, uh, CH-46s. Is there any, is, are there any plans to move those ships now East Timor? No, case? well, just, uh, I mean, first of all, uh, let me just talk a little bit about East Timor. Um, uh, obviously, uh, it's up to Indonesia to uh, provide 
uh, for the security of, of uh, its own people in East Timor, as well as United Nations workers and uh, other uh, foreigners in East Timor. And uh, we both, uh, President Habibi uh, and General Ruanto has said that they will do that. We expect them to do it. And um, uh, there are some signs that, uh, uh, that uh, the Indonesian army is beginning to be more aggressive in protecting the UN workers in, in uh, the capital of East Timor, Dili. Uh, in terms of NEO, uh, obviously, if the uh, Indonesian army uh, performs its job, uh, then there shouldn't be a uh, need for an evacuation. Uh, if there are plans for an evacuation, they would be run uh, by Australia, um, which of course is the nearest uh, country and um, uh, has taken on responsibility for conducting uh, any sort of uh, an evacuation that's necessary, but we hope it won't be necessary. Uh, so that's the situation in East Timor. In addition, the UN uh, is sending a team that's supposed to arrive tomorrow to evaluate the situation and then return to New York, I believe, on Friday uh, to report their findings. And um, uh, depending on what they report, then the UN will uh, decide what to do next. Might, might U.S. troops be used in any, in any UN force? And uh, if not, would, would U.S. aircraft be used in an airlift of UN well, I think troops? it's premature to speculate on that. Um, our uh, hope and expectation is that, Indone that the Indonesian military will do the job that uh, its president has said it will do and um, uh, provide uh, adequate security. No, no preliminary plans underway for that kind of thing, possible no. use of U.S. No. no. And ha has yes. us, uh, Australia, does Australia have the airlift assets in case there is an evacuation? And have they approached us in any way of, of a possibility of maybe using some of our assets if it came to that? Um, I believe they have adequate air, airlift assets. Is the United States willing, uh, if, if Australia were to send uh, some sort of peacekeeping force into East Timor, would the United States be willing to contribute some sort of support, either logistical or otherwise? I think the most uh, popular word at this briefing is if. And um, I'm just not going to speculate about that. Um, our expectation is that the Indonesians will do the job that uh, uh, their president has said they will do and uh, provide the necessary security. Uh, it's been it's been reported that um, that there's a, a belief in East Timor that the uh, special forces of the Indonesian military, the um, uh, Kopassus, uh, are somehow behind some of the violence that's going on there. Do you have any information that would uh, support that? And can you also update us about uh, whether the U.S. participates in any joint training with Indonesian special forces since I think it was cut off last year sometime? Well, I can't, uh, I just don't know the answer to the question uh, about the uh, Indonesian Special Forces. I have no evidence that that's the case. Um, in terms of training, as you know, our uh, training under the uh, JSET program is strictly uh, regulated by Congress. We report uh, training that we do. Uh, I'm not aware of any recent training events with the Indonesians, but I just haven't checked, and I'll have to uh, look into that. We'll get back Check to that. and see if it ever, ever re I remember last year, the last time we were dealing with the subject, that it was, the training was suspended. Um, can you see if it was ever resumed, and, and can we just get a taken question about what kinds of training exercises have taken part? Sure. Then, if any. You sure. said there were signs that the Indonesian Army is more aggressively uh, working to, I guess you implied, stabilize the situation on the ground, yet eyewitnesses on the ground say it is continuing to deteriorate, uh, not that it is stabilizing. Um, what are the signs that they are more aggressively or more helpfully um, intervening in this situation? My understanding is that they have provided a battalion of forces uh, from uh, uh, outside of, uh, uh, the, uh, of East Timor, um, and uh, in other words, not indigenous forces, but brought in a battalion of forces, and that they have, uh, uh, that they were able to turn back um, an assault by militia groups uh, against the UN people uh, last night. 
Yes. Two subject. Uh, there are more reports that uh, U.S. Special Forces were involved in actual operations at Waco. Uh, can you comment on those reports? Are they true or not true? The reports are wrong. Okay. And is this something that's still being investigated, or have you finished uh, looking into this matter about whether the U.S. military was had an operational role in, in Waco? Um, the U.S. military uh, uh, had a very limited role at Waco. It was a, and, uh, and it operated legally there. As you know, the military does not uh, get involved in domestic law enforcement. It can provide support under certain narrow conditions to domestic law enforcement agencies, and that's what happened at Waco. In terms of investigations, obviously we're cooperating with everybody who's looking into this, just as we have from the beginning. Um, there has been extensive testimony before Congress already. Uh, the GAO issued a report um, uh, uh, just last month in which it uh, reviewed U.S. military involvement in Waco and, uh, and found just what I said, that it was limited and legal. Um, and that report's available to you from the GAO. I don't often have a chance to, uh, to promote a GAO report, so I want to actually s s pause and do it twice. Um, uh, th this report uh, focused specifically on U.S. military involvement uh, in Waco and, uh, as I said, found it limited and legal. Can we go back to East Timor for a moment? Sure. Uh, I think you made it clear that at the moment there's no contemplation of direct military intervention in, in East Timor. Uh, my editors uh, ask me why that is. Is there a criteria that um, that the Pentagon or the administration uses for when to intervene in, in a crisis like this and when not to, and what's the tripwire? Well, uh, first of all, uh, every situation is uh, is different. Uh, but this is a situation where the president of Indonesia has uh, promised to honor the results of the plebiscite and, uh, and promised to uh, provide uh, necessary security uh, to the people of East Timor. And uh, we uh, expect him to uh, use his military to meet that part of his pledge. And uh, obviously there have been uh, regrettable and uh, uh, unfortunate uh, pr problems in East Timor. We're hoping that uh, now that the plebiscite is over, uh, that uh, the Indonesian military can provide um, uh, protection to the people of its own country, people who have voted for independence as well as uh, people who voted against independence. The overwhelming majority of the people in East Timor voted for independence, or they voted essentially for independence is the way it came out. Yes. Looking ahead to the uh, Secretary's speech on the coast, can you give us a, a sneak preview of what lessons did we learn in Kosovo? Well, I think I'll let the Secretary speak about that. I'd hate to take any spin off his ball tomorrow. Um, uh, but obviously he'll look at, uh, he'll look at it from uh, uh, two general perspectives. Uh, what we learned about our own forces as uh, during the air operations there and what we learned about uh, the NATO forces, what we learned about allied uh, uh, operations. And um, he'll, uh, he was, he's not in a position to give a uh, complete uh, rundown of the after action report, but he'll, he'll talk about uh, some of the preliminary conclusions. With the uh, fighting that you refer to um, in which Indonesian troops from outside of Timor uh, turn back and attack. Were they fighting uh, Indonesian troops who were who were based in uh, East Timor, or were they uh, fighting militias? Militias. My understanding, they were fighting militias. And is that fighting more widespread than that particular incident? I mean, or at least uh, uh, action by. Uh, Indonesian troops against uh, the militias, militias. I'm afraid I don't understand the question. Well, in other words, I mean, you mentioned one, one case in which uh, Indonesian troops turned back in assault by militias. Uh, have there been other cases uh, beyond that? Well, this was, a, uh, th this was an assault against uh, a potential uh, UNIMET or UN people. 
and that's what I was focusing on. Um, I don't know what's been happening happening elsewhere, but this was against the UN uh, people in in uh, Dili. Uh, yes. how, how sophisticated are the arms uh, that the militia is utilizing? I, I've heard it's, it's gone from machetes to RPGs. And I'm afraid I can't answer that question. So, Sec Secretary Albright uh, yesterday seemed to indicate that if the Indonesian government could not uh, establish stability in East Timor, then the UN or the world community would have to go in there and do it. Um, can you? Tell me what she's talking about. That sounds like uh, uh, a forceful entry by UN forces, or I I'm confused what she's talking well, about. Well, I think that's what the UN is trying to evaluate right now, uh, what its role is, if any. Uh, that's why Kofi Annan is sending a team to East Timor, and uh, I think we should uh, await their report. Uh, they'll look at um, at what the Indonesian military is doing or not doing to provide uh, protection. Uh, they'll look at the status of the uh, of the militia groups, including their armaments, and they'll look at the general security of the UN workers there primarily, uh, and come back with an assessment. Um, uh, obviously, it has been uh, the security has been marked more by laxes than successes recently, uh, but we're hopeful that, uh, that, in, that now that the plebiscite is over and it's clear what's going on, that the Indonesian military will, uh, uh, will perform its role of providing security. Should the violence continue, what's, what's the U.S. position? What is it that the Clinton administration wants to do should the violence continue? The U.S. position is very clear. We are going to uh, um, uh, uh, continue to encourage the Indonesian authorities to provide security. Um, uh, second, um, we are going to await the report of the uh, UN survey team, and uh, when we have uh, that information in hand, we'll decide what to do. Yes. New subject. Well, yes. Just one more on East Timor. Do is there any uh, American facilities in, in East Timor? Is there an embassy or a consulate? Are there any U.S. military personnel in East Timor, Marine Guards, or anything? Do you know? Well, first of all, East Timor is part of right. Indonesia, and the whole issue is whether it's going to remain part of Indonesia or become independent. The vote was essentially a vote for independence. Uh, so we don't have an embassy in, uh, in the part of another country. Uh, second, uh, there are three Marines attached to the UN mission there in, uh, in East Timor. Uh, and I believe that's the extent of our military, U.S. military force. Now, three Marines constitute a potent force, but they're there is, uh, to support the UN, uh, the UN mission. Yes, ma'am. One more East Timor. How is it, have, have we ruled out, the United States ruled out participation in the international peacemaking force? We have ruled in waiting for reports from the UN uh, team uh, once it returns from East Timor. Is anyone from the U.S. military part of the UN team? Um, not that I'm aware of. I, I don't know what the composition of the team is. We'll try. I mean, obviously, Kofi Annan's office of the UN is the place to go for that. But I'm not aware that there's a UN person on it. But a U.S. person. But uh, we'll double check on that. Is there a reluctance on the part of the United States to raise its hand on yet another peacekeeping operation, uh, with at least part of the U.S. military saying uh, that they are stretched way too thin as a result of Kosovo? You know, we've got a situation now where there are 20,000, uh, 23,000 Indonesian troops in East Timor um, that are either unable or unwilling to provide uh, uh, order and security. Uh, I think that um, the preferred solution on everybody's part, Indonesia's part, which has not asked for any outside help, has not asked for any UN help, and has not asked for any outside security forces. Um, Indonesia's part, uh, the Australian, uh, the part of Australia which is uh, um, uh, committed and ready to perform NEOs if necessary, uh, that is, uh, evacuations, evacuation operations if necessary. I think everybody agrees that the preferred solution here is for the Indonesians to provide the necessary uh, security. Um, we are hopeful that that will happen. It has not happened yet, uh, but we are hopeful that it will. And uh, that 
clearly is the best solution. It's the solution that the Indonesians themselves want, uh, but they have to uh, act to bring that solution uh, to bear, and they have not yet done that. That, that doesn't address my question. Is there a reluctance on the part of the United States to offer peacekeeping forces because uh, the U.S. military has been pushed into so many different peacekeeping operations that uh, the U.S. is beginning to feel the strain. It's not clear at this stage that peacekeeping forces are necessary. That's what we're trying to find out. And uh, I think there's a reluctance to make a commitment until we know the full, uh, full scope of the facts. And there's a reluctance to make a commitment until, um, until the U.N. has had a chance to evaluate the situation. And then, of course, depending on what the U.N. Uh, determines, we will have to uh, respond to what the UN finds. Steve, is, is there a uh, administration judgment on what our national interest is in all this? Well, um, this is an evolving situation, but um, obviously, uh, we um, we've supported this this uh, plebiscite, this vote. Um, uh, we've made it very clear to the Indonesians that we. Uh, I expect them to provide uh, security and order in East Timor, and so far they have, have not done enough of that. Um, uh, clearly, it would be th – this has been the focus of international attention for a long while. Two, uh, two people won a Nobel Peace Prize several years ago for promoting uh, uh, East Timorese independence. So this has been uh, a neuralgic issue really since uh, the mid-'70s. When, uh, when East Timor became a part of uh, – uh, was, was left by the Portuguese and then ultimately became part of Indonesia. Um, it clearly is destabilizing this area, uh, that is, this part of Asia. Uh, Indonesia is a huge country. It stretches uh, more than 3,000 miles in length. Um, it uh, spans uh, one of the major sea lanes in the world. Uh, it's a country of uh, many peoples and many languages. It's the uh, uh, most uh, populous, populous uh, Muslim country in the world. And uh, it's very close to a number of our uh, uh, important allies, including Australia. So we do have an interest in maintaining uh, peace and order in that uh, important part of the world. But that is the job right now for the Indonesian forces to uh, perform in East Timor. I'm sorry, one more on, on Timor. Actually, it's a two-part question. One, um, is it the administration's view that the United States has any responsibility at all for the situation in East Timor, given the long uh, involvement uh, with the United States and the Indonesian military? And the second part of the question, can you define the word neuralgic, please? Um, the first is, uh, uh, I don't think we have uh, – I, mean, I just don't think your, your first question makes sense. Um, uh, the problem here is that the military has refused to act, not that it's acting. Um, we have not uh, had a long relationship with, uh, with the Indonesian uh, – uh, the, the relationship we have had with the Indonesian military, particularly in recent years, has been to uh, uh, talk to them about the importance of human rights, to talk to them about the importance of, uh, of, um, of uh, professional operations. And uh, I think, in general, the Indonesian military has performed quite well during a very difficult time in Indonesia's history, but not in East Timor. Um, and they have not provided the uh, security necessary in East Timor. Neuralgic, uh, troublesome, I guess, would be the easiest way to describe it. Yes? Can, uh, there have been numerous reports from, from uh, East Timor that the, that the military has supported the militias and has, in some cases, been actively involved in some of these attacks. Uh, does that not square with the information that you're getting when you say that the problem is that the military is not acting or refu is refusing to act? Well, let me go back to what I've said several times before, that the President Habibi and the Chief of Staff for Rwanto have both made uh, pledges that the, uh, uh, that the Indonesian military will do its job and provide security. We expect them to meet those pledges. Um, second, Indonesia has not requested outside help. It has said it can take care of the problem itself. 
we urge it to take care of the problem itself and, and to provide the security necessary in East Timor. Um, we're talking about the protection of Indonesian people in East Timor. And uh, that uh, is first and foremost the job of the Indonesian authorities to perform. Yes. Uh, there are reports out of China that uh, uh, the Chinese may be buying uh, ballistic missile submarines from Russia. Are you concerned about these reports? Have you verified them? Have you looked into them? Um, we uh, have no indication that those reports are correct. Yes. Has the Secretary received the Vieques Commission's report yet? And I what's his timetable for acting on it? Uh, I, I just don't know the answer. Do you know whether he's received the report? Still being written. I think that there's the answer from Admiral Quigley, still being written. Um, I think that uh, they're aiming for, uh, uh, well, the Secretary is going to be out of town uh, through the end of the week. Um, they're aiming for uh, uh, probably next week or as soon as possible. And would he simply, I mean, would he act on it or is he, does he, is he intended to Well, my understanding is that the President um, uh, asked uh, him to report, asked the Secretary to report to President Clinton. Now, Secretary Cohen had already put in motion a, uh, uh, a committee to study the Vieques situation. And uh, he did that before he got the request from President Clinton. So he took, uh, he, he basically said, rather than do this twice, uh, we'll do it once. But when I get the report, I'll pass it on to the President. That's my understanding of, of how it's going to work. So um, uh, he will not be the final review authority here. It'll be President Clinton. We make a recommendation with it. I, I assume that he will, yes. And there was a report last week that, that the panel had agreed on a recommendation of a five-year timetable for the Navy to withdraw from Vegas. Has the Secretary received any kind of briefing informally, uh, letting him know that this is what's coming, be prepared for it, anything like that? I can't answer that question. I wasn't here last week. Um, but I would just caution against uh, preliminary conclusions until the entire report's finished. Uh, yeah. does, does the Pentagon have a position on the release of the Puerto Rican terrorists, the clemency? No, this is not a Pentagon issue. The Secretary hasn't given uh, weight in on the issues with the White House? This is a domestic law enforcement issue. It's not a uh, Pentagon issue. And, uh, and back on China, could you update us on what's going on there with, in, in terms of uh, uh, flights, sorties between uh, Chinese and Taiwanese aircraft that seem to have been a lot of activity, hundreds of sorties a while ago? Is that still continuing? Um, China did not patrol over the strait on a daily basis. Uh, it started to in July, and um, it has been patrolling at a uh, much greater rate um, over the last uh, month or so than uh, previously. And uh, the uh, 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 Taiwanese Chinese forces have also been patrolling more aggressively uh, than before. Uh, generally, however, I would say the response on the part of China has been um, restrained uh, in this case, and uh, it's been limited uh, uh, primarily to uh, increased air operations over the strait. And uh, I, the Chinese have been careful not to fly over the so-called center line uh, down the middle of the strait. They haven't flown over that line at all? I didn't say they haven't flown over it at all. I've said they've been careful not to fly over it. Thank you. Sure. Thanks.